Craig Jones. What's up? Possibly the most entertaining person in <laughs> jiu-jitsu in the world right now. If you can't be the best, you at least got to be uh, provide some value. This is a bit of a controversial opinion to go straight off. From my experience with Australian men, banter hasn't been the strong point. Often you look at Australian guys and they're like rigged up, great tattoos, chiseled chests. I feel like there's almost an element of British in you. In me? Yeah, like... Well, obviously the convict past, but um, <clears throat> I think you... I mean, you've been in Sydney, spending most of your time there. I think there's probably less banter over there. Yeah, that could be it. It could be maybe the South Australia element of it that we're missing. For sure. I think like other parts of Australia, less... Uh, I don't know what the right word is. Less self-conscious men probably have better banter. I think the harder it is for you to be offended, the easier you can fire back. I not, like that. You're not startled by anything. So some people uh, may have seen you before on social media potentially in an only fans rash guard yep yeah do you want to talk us through that to begin with um i was trying to cut in on the market of all these women that get to make money off only fans to do nothing with their lives and i thought i'd sort of make a bit of a joke about that bring it to jujitsu because even some of the jujitsu girls get to do it they get to be uh i guess medium level athletes and then make a career off only fans so i was trying to trying to steal some of their angle there make some of the money for myself <laughs> So if someone was to actually click on the paywall for that, would they get through to any exclusive content? For sure, yeah. We put up sort of joke techniques on there. Like I'd put my real techniques on Fanatics and I put up the offensive piss your training partner off techniques up there. But I would still sell, I was selling underwear on there. <laughs> I put up $1,000 to for a, a hog shot. No one bought it, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> but I would have sent it for sure. I think that uh, a lot of people in jiu-jitsu can take this sport very seriously when it has such great potential to be a bit more jovial, a bit more fun. Uh, and I think that you're doing incredible things in that kind of field where people can have a bit more of a smile on their face during training. Even this morning, you uploaded a video of chopping down a, a good level wrestler <laughs> several times. And I'm getting sent that by my mates in the UK. They're like, how's he doing that? <laughs> what's, what's the secret? I just like to have a good time. I mean, I don't know how people can take it seriously. We're just wrestling other men. You know what I mean? I don't know. I don't get it. I don't get what's so serious about that other than it's sort of traditional roots. But yeah, it's kind of silly what we do, so I try to take advantage of that. But <clears throat> yeah, I try to hit embarrassing moves on people in the training room because I feel like it's like you can submit anyone with a, with a high-level simple technique, but if you can get someone with some bullshit, they're going to go home. They're going to remember that forever. <laughs> I want them to go home and think about like, how, how did he do that? You want fully grown dangerous athletes to go home and think about you when they're sleeping with their missus you want you want to be living rent free in their head exactly when, when they're home quiet not talking to the missus i want to be the reason for that <laughs> that's quite it's quite admirable now one of the other things to anyone that maybe hasn't come across your socials before you can look and appear to be quite an unassuming character walking down the street i'm not sure someone would consider that you're probably one of the most dangerous athletes out there at the moment now you self-proclaim and almost position yourself as the second best in the world, which is why this gym is called the B Team. Like that kind of banter to do something of that is, is pretty impressive. Tell me about the formation of the B Team. Why Austin? Why, why did you try and, I suppose, have such a, a banterous topic for a gym? How did it come about? Well, first of all, I always, I remember I heard a, who was it? I heard a Russian guy one time talk about there was like a saying in Russia where guys would claim to be second best and then everyone would be like, well, who's the first best? And he'd be like, well, a lot of people claim to be the first best. So I, I thought I'd claim to be second best because no one would argue with that. No one would be like, no, I'm the second best grappler in the world. So that's the angle I thought I'd take because then there would be a, no one would really dispute it. And I guess that's sort of the same angle we have with the gym. Obviously, we split up with uh, DDS. Well, DDS ended. New Wave uh, are in North Austin and we're in South Austin. And we were like, all right, well, we'll be the second best gym in Austin. So even if you were to say from a, a performance standpoint, the second best, it seems from like a culture, popularity, social media standpoint, you've, I suppose, on purpose, inadvertently become the most popular gym, not just in Austin, but from what I see, probably the world right now. Yeah, I think it's more relatable. I think it's more relatable for the average person to feel attached to that idea of not being the best and do you know what? I, I i like that i admire that and it was even one of the factors where me and friends in australia and the uk were like oh it'd be amazing to train with dds in puerto rico we were joking that 
uh, after the pandemic, that's like where we would go straight away. But then after seeing the B team form, I was like, oh, I'm, I'm actually going to go there. Like fresh purple belt, want to get really stuck into it. And even from my very first day here, it was incredibly welcoming. And because you've got so many people here that are kind of transient, it, there's not many clicks. People come in, they're like, hey, where are you from? How long are you in town? And I don't think there's been many gyms before where people have just taken two weeks out to come train somewhere twice a day. Um, so it's, it's pretty amazing to, to kind of see that. One thing is, they, there are some guys in here that are high-level killers and they beat the shit out of me. But then I see you beat the shit out of them. It's, it's just mind games. I try to beat them down with the banter. Learned, learned helplessness. If you can psychologically get to them, they won't come back too hard. That's what I'm doing with Isaac because obviously Isaac's going to be kicking my ass soon. But if I can get in his head, I can mess, mess with him a little bit, he's not going to hit me as hard. When he came to Sydney and was training in, in our gym, there was a real shock for a lot of us, especially a lot of no-gi athletes who thought they were good no-gi athletes. We'd seen you guys and what you were doing on you know, Polaris, on flow grappling, on who's number one. But then experiencing the taste of it face to face was quite frightening. And there's a lot of people out there that probably they're in their own little like echo chambers of nogi jiu jitsu. They don't get experience to the the high level stuff here. He's definitely one of those killers. With the team you've got here, what are the kind of the aspirations for competitions? I mean, ADCC when's that? ADCC will be September 2022. Okay, so people are working towards something about a year away. Is yeah. that really everything you're channeling towards? For sure. We're trying to build a game around that. We're also trying to innovate in terms of going into that competition. I feel like whoever's on the cutting edge of techniques is sort of going to clean up the competition. But I, when I say cutting edge techniques and innovate, I don't mean some bullshit like the buggy choke or something. You know what I mean? You're not going to be able to pull side control bottom and submit your way to the ADCC final. Something like what Lachlan Giles did or DDS did with heel hooks. That's like a true innovation. You know what I mean? Really changed uh, the game. And I think the next innovation will be incorporating wrestling reversals, wrestling sweeps. Everyone says wrestling to jiu-jitsu will be the innovation, but like we're never going to have a better shot than a wrestler. That wrestler might get the better shot off on us, but where the scramble would have ended in a freestyle wrestling tournament or in an IBJJF event where they would have scored points, we can capitalize on how much harder it is to score in ADCC and find reversals or submissions out of there. So that's the goal for us, innovate and really clean up at that next ADCC. I think it's one of the most exciting things about the sport is Say for rugby, you might every two or three years have a rule change to benefit the game or make it a bit safer. But here you guys are quite literally making up new things. Now, I won't tell people what it is in case the enemy's listening. But Isaac <laughs> was showing me the new position that you invented. And I was saying to him, it's pretty crazy that you guys can just hash out kind of different things and spend time. I say he's taking it to the lab. There's two times you could take something to the lab. One, when you're trying out things with your training partner. And two, when you go on a girl's Instagram. <laughs> so we say, like, if a girl, if one of your guys is dating a girl, you're like, everyone gets the Insta and you go to the lab, you pinch Zoom, you try and figure out some stuff. You can find them out. <laughs> find the angles. Yeah, well, I mean, like, for me, it's like I talk so much shit to all my training partners that I have to innovate. I have to stay ahead of them here. So it's like, it's like MMA fighters that talk shit so they train harder in the, in the training camp. That's how I treat every day in training. Like, I'm trying to beat Nicky Ryan down, Isaac down, because I know they're going to come to kill me, and I better be ready for it. Uh, you're quite an elusive character. When So on social media, you're, you're in the gym, you're training, you're putting up videos and stuff like that. I've noticed that not a lot of the Craig Jones personal life is ever shown to people. You're operating in the shadows a bit then. What kind of stuff do you do in your downtime when you're not here on the mats? I try to keep it a complete mystery. <laughs> try to keep the personal life a complete mystery generally. But yeah, I mean, I, I'm so exhausted from this shit that I really don't have much time to do anything else. Like right now, I've, we're running this business trying to plan competitions as an athlete, trying to plan what events I can get these guys on, trying to come up with new designs for MA1, new funny ideas for apparel, and trying to plan out new instructionals. So it's just like, it never ends. You had the two, the B team was the first piece of genius. The second one was the Mexican ground karate. I, I wore the t-shirt out the other night and I was worried for a second, like there was a few people that looked potentially Mexican <laughs> of nature, like trying to, I wasn't sure if they were going to find it offensive or that I was insinuating something, but that was pretty funny. And you've got the sign outside. How did that come about? How did it come about? Actually, so Seth, my business partner here, um, we were getting the sign made and he's like, what should we put on it? And first I said, let's do submission grappling, submission wrestling or something. And then I thought about it for a couple of hours. I was like, we should definitely turn this into a, a piss take of some sort. So I was like, you know what? Americans call it American Jiu-Jitsu. 
Brazilians call it Brazilian jiu-jitsu. I don't really feel comfortable calling it either because I think the Brazilians stole it from Japan anyway. So I'm like, let's just fucking give it to the Mexicans. <laughs> That's the angle we took. Ground karate. And again, it kind of plays into that theme of not taking it too seriously, not making it a, a really serious sport and something that can still remain fun because I suppose if you're going to have people that are going to do this for 10 years, they need to be able to enjoy it. Like, uh, okay, still quite elusive with your personal life. I like it. I like, I like the absolute swerve there. I might have to tell you one day and just see what you get up to. Uh, so you haven't been in Australia for a few years now. Austin's very much like you, your favourite place. What is it about Austin that really drew you to it? Well, I will say I'm biased though because I, after spending six months in Puerto Rico, I always tell this to people, I was like, anywhere could it would have seemed amazing to me. Like I could have gone to Afghanistan. I would have like, wow, what a beautiful <laughs> place to live, you know? So Puerto Rico was such a nightmare experience just day to day. Just everything over there was just complete chaos. You had a car with no brakes, if I recall correctly. Car with no brakes. Uh, what else? The seatbelt stopped working. Yeah, just never ended. Supermarkets Puerto. apparently would just be barren one day and power yeah. cuts all the time you go to the gas station there'd be no gas uh when i moved into my apartment it took me six weeks to access my mailbox everyone i'd go to would be like that's not my problem i'd be like what do you mean it's not your problem i rented the apartment from you just <laughs> never ending but yeah puerto rico i could talk for hours about puerto rico but yeah what i like about austin it is a big city it's got a lot of opportunities and stuff but it sort of still has a small small town sort of feel and what's weird is i'm from adelaide australia <clears throat> and austin and adelaide have been sister cities since day one. So there's meant to be a lot of similarities between city planning and stuff. So I don't know. I think this is why this place feels like home to me. Oh, really? I didn't know about that beforehand. But it seems that everyone now is uh, kind of making their way to Austin. Uh, I spoke to Lex briefly, at who's number one. He says you reckon you got two years until it's too busy, too packed. Yeah, I mean, I feel like some of the locals probably already think it's, it's way too busy right now. As far as the, the gym and say that you've got an aspiring purple belt, brown belt somewhere out there, is your kind of model at the moment to be like, hey, come over, do your application. Let's make sure you're not a complete psychopath. Come train, spend some weeks here. Is that really the kind of model you want to go after? Yeah, for sure. We want to keep the team small. Like I'm saying less than 150 full-time members, really, so then we can all improve together and people don't get lost in a sea of faces. And we also like to keep it small because we have such a big range of coaches. I think we've got seven coaches. So it's already going to be hard enough for us all to keep keep up to date with the members so obviously if though if that membership base grew to three four hundred amongst seven coaches no one would know any of the students okay but luckily uh because we have so many coaches most of us come to each other's classes we sort of as long as the membership base is small we can sort of get to know everyone roll with everyone keep tabs on their skill level adjust the classes to what we feel like they need and then um, the kind of brand that you're growing here as well you were saying that you kind of offline you're like i want to make the B team, like the most famous gym in the world. Is it going to remain as one kind of mecca or could you see it expanding maybe as a franchise? I really want to expand the cult further to other cities, other countries. <laughs> I love it as like a, a parasite that works its way into other gyms and pulls people out of it that don't want to do warm-ups. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> Definitely no warm-ups here and that's really the first way to secure these people. Do you know what? I, I've got the fear a little bit. So later on this week, I've got to return back to the UK. And in the UK, I train at probably one of the best gyms at Roger Gracie Academy. Doing that little run around the gym or even some high knees and heel flicks, I'm going to die a bit inside. <laughs> well, I saw you at Checkmat doing some crazy arm um, Yeah, work. mate. <laughs> one of the guys who uh, I had on the podcast this week, he was like, you have to come train, you have to come train. But it, there were some very talented athletes in there. But people were going like real hard. And I was like, okay, this is, this is kind of cool, but it's kind of tiring me out. I wanted to train twice a day. I actually, I'd already trained in the morning here. And... Before, I would have really been into that, but I really like the technicality of the roles here and the fact that you can do a few rounds and get up afterwards and be like, oh, do you know what? I'm going to come back at lunch. I thought I was some kind of bad man on my first day where you know, I went home, showered, got my fresh rash guard, came back. Everyone here at lunch had been here at 8 a.m. You've got like a lot of people here full time. Yeah, which is crazy because like, I think we've got 100 members, yet every class has at least 30 people in it. So it's like it's so many people train almost every day or even twice a day every day. There was one class that I nearly skipped the other day and the technique we did in it blew my mind. Oh yeah, who was teaching? Uh, Nikki. Nikki, nice. And the, the concept, I, I thought I knew it, but I was actually just stepping into 50-50 and getting fucking hilled <laughs> all the time. And I was like, well, this isn't working. I haven't got this right. 
and and just watching it and having a couple of like corrections from him, I was like, this is actually insane. And that's kind of given me the bug now where I suppose I don't want to miss a class out in case someone else finds a way to kill me and I'm not there to witness <laughs> it. Um, the the kind of uh, approach you have to like the jiu-jitsu, the leopard print shorts, not taking it too, too seriously, this is definitely impacting other people doing the sport. And there's like, a, like you say about the cult, I, I go into gyms all around the world and see someone wearing a fuck Craig Jones rash guard. <laughs> how, did, how did that start? That started, I'm trying to think, years and years ago in Australia because, like I was saying, I try to catch people with, like, embarrassing submissions. And that's sort of, it was born out of my training partner saying that after a roll or during a roll or maybe when I'm, I film the, I film the technique and send it to him or something. I'm a big fan of, like, say, like, if I hit a, a single leg on, like, Nicky Ryan or something, later that day I'll send him a single leg defense video on YouTube. <laughs> to let him just think about it more. So that's when that sort of came about. And then my sponsor was like, let's just put it on a fucking rash guard. I was like, I'm down. And then people that don't like me can buy it. And the fans that see it, ironically, can buy it too. There's, um, the, you did a post the other day about the kind of, uh, the new apparel that you had. So people out there listening that want to get their first pair of leopard print, no gi shorts, or fuck Craig Jones rash guard, even if they've never met you or never been or trained under you, you still say, yeah, go get that. Make an impact on your gym. Let them know they've been Craig Jonesified. Is that what you want? Exactly. Well, you can add a layer to it, right? So I try to hit people with embarrassing submissions. But if you're just at a regular gym and you hit a regular submission on a guy, but you're in leopard print, that adds a little bit of that factor to it. You know, you're like, you don't want to get submitted by a guy in leopard print. So the more ridiculous they can dress, then also these people, you're saying to them, look, stage number one, get yourself some leopard print. Stage number two, start submitting your opponents, then getting in their heads. Then getting in them in the evening. Hey, by the way, mate, thanks for the role earlier. Here's a video. Here's some, here's some things to think about. Another thing as well is like, uh, it's you can't even really brag about beating up a guy that's wearing leopard print. You know what I mean? Sort of like the image you have of someone in leopard print isn't someone you'd brag about beating anyway. So it's win-win. Uh, last few things. Uh, your last Rotolo fight looked pretty spicy. Uh, there were some uh, rumors that you were going to fight Gabby Garcia. Yes. I, th- I believe it's still going to happen December 31st in Japan. In Japan. So, uh, Gabby Garcia is uh, a well-decorated female athlete. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure where I missed it, but how did the call come for you to potentially put your hand up as someone to take her on? So, there was a Who's Number One event that Gabby was on and Gordon was on, and I believe I competed at the same event. And I remember Gabby was saying after the, her match, she was like, anyone that calls me out, she's like, I don't care who it is male female she's like gordon ryan calls me out i'm taking the match and gordon ryan didn't call her out but i was like wait a minute i see an opportunity here and then i I put it to her and she started coming back and forth with the banter and then it sort of grew from there and then we were gonna have the match for free we're gonna do it on instagram and then the night before gabby said she was getting some big offers from big organizations when we first put the idea forth no one wanted to touch it even flow grappling didn't want to touch it but then as a as the sort of marketing built and the public seemed to be accepting of it, I think people were scared, scared of a man versus woman sort of some form of combat. combat yeah. yeah. They were scared to touch it. And then when it started blowing up, everyone wanted to, to book the match, but we were going to do it for free. Gabby canceled that the night before. She's like, we'll just do a press conference tomorrow. We announced that we're probably going to do it later in the year at a big event. And uh, that's when really I started thinking about costumes <laughs> on the way in. I had an idea. I was like, I'm going to hit Walmart and buy a typical wife beater outfit. <laughs> so we found a do rag. We found a wife beater singlet. I think I had ripped jeans, shorts, some Crocs. I put a packet of Marlboro Reds on, with my wallet on the press conference table and we had a, a 40. You seen any rebuttal or backlash since? I suppose if it's an organized competitive, I mean, you could even say, look, you're a bit of a weight disadvantage, aren't you? And height. For sure, for sure. And maybe strength. And accomplishments. And accomplishments and titles. That would be, you know, And but the best thing is if you lost, you could still say you're the second best. And, and to be honest, if I lost, people would think I threw it anyway. So it's like I can't lose in this situation. That's exciting. I'm looking forward to tuning into that. Now, what does the kind of future hold for Craig Jones? What are your kind of aspirations? You're going to maybe, you know, stay here for a few years, maybe head back to Australia in the future, or are you just playing it by you? You, I'll probably play it by. I'll be in Austin for a while for sure. 
really enjoy this place. But uh, in terms of competition, just whatever's interesting. Right now, I'm talking to Eddie Bravo about a December 19th combat jiu-jitsu match. And what piqued my interest about that is just how funny would it be that so many people would want to see me get slapped. That's sort of that's what's pushing me in that direction. What do, what do you think? So combat jiu-jitsu is where you can do normal jiu-jitsu, but you can slap someone with an open hand. Yep, yep. What do you think about that as a sporting concept? I think it's more funny than anything. You know what I mean? I think it's like, uh, it's kind of a bit silly, but it also is a good way to test your jiu-jitsu out without taking too much damage to the head. But again, guys are still getting finished and TKO'd and cut up in there. So I could I could potentially take some some damage. I uh, I think it was, I was trying to explain to someone, a female at the time, I was like, hey, jiu-jitsu school. They're like, oh, do girls do it? I was like, yeah. I was like, oh, Fionn, she's been on my podcast. Let me show you a video. And it was her getting to an arm bar oh, and, then, and then just starts pounding the gun. Face. I'm like, yeah, this is the wrong one to show you. That's <laughs> oh, that's that's just combat jiu-jitsu. That's where you can absolutely smash your partner in the face with an open hand. Um, but yeah, uh, Eddie Bravo, uh, I was chatting to someone about him the other day. He got a little bit of heat where he's only really had two proper competitive matches. And it was with the same Gracie, wasn't it? Yeah, he had a uh, Hoyler Gracie ADCC. Hoyler was the favorite, never been submitted, submitted him. Eddie lost the next round to Leo Vieira, and then they had the rematch years later. But I see you doing quite a bit of stuff with the 10th Planet here as well for the seminars, stuff like that. There's no beef there at the moment? No, nah, no beef at all. Interesting. I like 10th Planet. 10th Planet always really uh, a supportive group of people. Like when I travel around and do seminars, 10th Planet has a crew that's really like uh, really supportive of seminars, really positive, real fun. I mean, they obviously they take a bit of heat online because of a lot of quirky sort of personalities they have uh, and a lot of crazy submissions they try to do. But again, I get behind that, you know. Trying to, you know, with these Instagram algorithms, some people just got to mix shit up, see if it goes. That's for sure. You got to test it out, right? I test it out. I get shadow banned, but I'm trying. Yeah, so at the moment we're trying to, if, if someone was to find you on Instagram, it's Craig Jones BJJ. Yeah. And then they, still no verification either. They won't give me that either, no. Well, hopefully after Gabby Garcia, you have a lot of Japanese support. <laughs> the blue tick will come through. And hopefully they'll lift your shadow ban. Um, Craig, thank you very much for having a chat with me today. Thank you. Really good. Looking forward to everyone listening to that. Cheers, awesome. mate. Thanks, bro.